Hi everyone, um, I've had a few requests from friends and family and stuff asking about my thesis. So I thought I'd put together a video so that I could show everyone. So for those of you who don't know, my thesis was in controlling a prosthetic arm using surface EMG, which basically means controlling it using the muscles in my own arm and just reading the electricity to um, use as a control signal. So this here, this is my arm that I built. Um, it's built completely using a 3D printer. So I printed all the parts. Um, as you can see here, they're all made of plastic. And then I've wired it up using um, ligaments and tendons type design to actuate the fingers with motors inside the forearm here. And you can see here I've also got this processing board, it's an Arduino, uh, just to control the motors. Alrighty, so that, that's my arm. I have nicknamed him Hubert, Hubert the human arm. So what I'll do is I'll just talk you through the process of what I did so you can see how it all works. Um, so as you can see here, um, I've got my arm wired up and that's just to a device here. This device is designed for taking readings all over the body um, and I've just got one on my top of my arm, one on the underside of the arm, and then there's just one at the back. That's just my ground electro. So this here is going to be talking wirelessly to my computer. So if we run this, you can see there there's a signal going through. Now, if I move my arm um, in this direction, you can see that top channel there, we can now see a signal. And if I relax, it goes back down again. And now if I do this motion, you can see that bottom channel is nice and active. And again, relaxing. And if I clench my fist, you can see both channels are quite active. Um, so that's just looking at two of the biggest muscles in the arm. Uh, which turned out to be the best option. So... From that you can see a basic truth, so the top channel, which is associated with these electrodes here, activates when I do this, an extension motion, and the bottom channel, this one, channel 2, when I do the flexion, and they both activate when I make a grip. So using that basic um, truth table style approach, I wanted to use that to initiate motion in the arm. So this data that I've gathered here is saved and I then go through a, quite a few processing steps to clean up the signal um, to be used in the prosthetic arm because the arm can only use digital signals. So what I'll do is I'll actually run some of the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run code that takes a clenching motion. And so if I, with that data, the clench motion, the arm will now clench as well. So as you can see there, that was just a basic clench motion. And what's being produced here on the screen, that top signal there is the raw data. So that's basically the same as what I was getting on the other piece of software we looked at. And as you can see, there's various steps which I go through to get to this bottom step down here. And this step here, you can see it's a nice square wave. And that's what we put into the servo motors. So that's just a really clean when it's on and when it's off. And you can see that the length of that square wave is proportional to the actual length of the activation. So that's really important, knowing how long the person has activated their muscles so that the action that the arm produces is proportionally similar to what the muscle said it should be. Okay, so that's one motion based on one action that I produce with my muscles. That's not very useful for someone with a prosthetic arm. So what I want to do is then take a series of motions. So looking at those states that we looked at, the flexion, extension, and the um, grasp, looking at all those states, I wanted to put a series of motions together. So I'll run the code for that so we can see how that works.
Alrighty, so what you saw there is the rotate left and the rotate right in the wrist. I've mapped that to extension and flexion. So what that hand just did is it took a extension motion, a fist motion, and then a flexion motion, and it glued them all together to make that series of um, motions that the hand just completed. And you probably guess that something like turn, make a fist, and turn back again is more useful than just make a fist. Um, the interesting thing is you can now map multiple gesture patterns to that. So instead of doing a fist, I can now make it point using the same signals of flexion and extension and then making a fist. But now I'll map it to a different pattern and it will point instead of making a fist. So what you see there, this mapping of different gestures, is actually how current commercially available prosthetic hands work. The thumb acts like a switch in the commercially available products. And so what they do is they just, the patient locks the thumb to a certain position and that acts as an indication of how they want the hand to close. So if it's locked into this position, it means that I want to make a point when you get activation from these muscles. But if it's locked into this position, I want you to make a fist instead. So what I've done there is by using the same muscles the commercially available prosthetics use and by mapping different gesture patterns to activations in these muscles, I'm able to replicate the motions that are basically available. Um, so some obvious things, the hardware. This isn't suitable for someone with a prosthetic to use. Um, it's not designed for that, it's purely a medium for me to be able to demonstrate what I can do. Um, this, this is also not very practical for someone with a prosthetic. So um, the scope of the thesis is very well crafted in the sense that the work has to be um, enough to take you through the year, not too much, not too little. So the majority of my work has been in the signals processing stuff in those steps, getting it from that raw, messy data down to a nice, clean, square wave. So there's still a lot of work that needs to be done for this to get it to be usable for a prosthetic limb. But hopefully you can all see that um, by taking the data from my own arm and using that in processing, I'm able to get um, usable motions. So um, with more work on both, both ends of the hardware, it could actually be a useful um, product for someone. So I plan to do more work um, to get better classification as well, so looking at more motions than just open, close, point, um, more delicate things like opening and closing halfway. These are all things that need to be worked on, but that's my work that I completed for my thesis. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know, but hope you enjoyed it.